What's up, YouTube, man? I'm back with another video. As you can see, I opened up this window over here. I know I look like a ghost, but don't judge me. I opened up this window over here a little bit, a little, like a little cracked, but I'm like, well, I put it down at first. I'm like, oh, it's a little cold out here, bro. A little, you know, feel good, though. Gotta get some fresh air each and every day, just a little, just a little bit, even if it's by the window. You, you dig what I'm saying? But um it's three o'clock already let me grab my iphone real quick and then i'm gonna talk with y'all and we just going this is gonna be like 15 8 to 15 minute video just uploading something because like this channel you know it go through its little seasons and different vibes or whatever um it's all for the greater good though for the glory of god you know what i'm saying and i want to lean on god the channel helps me do that because it's just better with the channel. Um, it's just more commune, communal, communal, whatever that word is. Like, think about it if you pray to God every day. But then when you go to the holy, the holy, uh, the, the church, you know what I'm saying? The, the, or whatever religion you wish, you go to the, the mosque or the temple or whatever, it's like, you know, it adds value to it. It's like you see the greater, you, you can physically see you know what I'm saying? Community and the brothers there and you know what I'm saying? And it's more of a bigger manifestation. But y'all know me, uh, family, I'm into all of that. I'm into like, I'm into everything, numerology, spirituality. Uh, some people even say that that's witchcraft. And some people even say that, you know, people say a lot of things and, you know, I don't be out here talking to everybody, so I haven't got, you know, everybody's opinions on everything I do, but, you know, I listen here and there on certain little things and stuff like that. But let me grab my iPhone, because I want to talk to y'all about having a schedule. My schedule, shout out to my bro texting me. My bro always working out. I was telling I was telling some of the people I'm texting, I'm like, yo, I'm about to do a couple jumping jacks today. That's good for your cardio. You know what I'm saying? Do a couple jumping jacks. And even if it's 15, like 15 jumping jacks, uh, you can't be, you know what I'm saying? You can't be scared to work out. And when I was living down south in Charlotte, I definitely had my resistance bands is in my it's in my bag. And I definitely was um uh, working that working out working out working out you know hooking it up to the door pulling it exercising my body you know what i'm saying and, uh life is just you know its own thing you know what i'm saying see people outside and stuff like that somebody sitting in the grass up there yeah, but, but 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 let me stay focused. It's Monday, right? So I always talk to y'all about having a daily schedule and whatnot. And it can become cluttered very quickly in life, like very, very fast. Like I noticed this. Like the more I work on myself, I quickly notice, like, yo, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? You created a schedule Monday through Sunday, right? Uh but your sleep schedule is off. And I remember like, I want to say even like seven or six years ago, um, I was working at a warehouse a temp job. And that's when my sleep schedule, I first remember, because I was always in school, you know what I'm saying? Uh, something like that. But I remember my sleep schedule, it first like, it first like, um, took like a, how can I, how can I say it? Like, it took a turn. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it changed direction. Cause even when I was younger in school, I could go to sleep and still be on, still be on point. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, at least five or six years ago, 
because I never valued sleep that much. Like, I, you know, when you're young, you, you don't really value sleep like that. Like, you love it. It feels good sometimes. And sometimes I don't love it and I don't really care for it at all. But it was what it was. But I noticed, you know, like I said, five or something years ago, when I got back from job corps and I was working a job, I noticed my sleep schedule started to have a dent in it and started to take a turn and I didn't care you know what I'm saying because it's like when you transition it from young to older you don't really tally mark like oh my sleep schedule is off that means my life is going to be horrible like you don't put that with that all the time but I've learned through doing YouTube and creating a daily schedule for myself and stuff like that I'm like even if you don't got a job and you only got a side hustle you got to be your own boss, and that means you still got to take uh, initiative regardless. And that's what I want to talk to y'all about, how, like, some days my initiative is just not there. I don't feel it. And some days I do, but I'm learning to feel it more frequently, and that's what this video is about. Because... Um, nothing changes overnight. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't get into a bad situation overnight, and you're not gonna get into a good one overnight. Uh, you might even jump up in success and then notice that it gets shaky because it's easy to say, "Oh, I just got this many subscribers," blah, 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 or "I just got a video that touched this many likes." It's easy for you to say, "Hmm." I feel successful right now, or I feel like I'm on the road to success right now. It's very easy for you to feel that way. So you got to really correct yourself. Like, it's okay to think it or to feel it real quick, but why why waste time, like, too much on that instead of keep grinding? Like, you know what I'm saying? And then another thing, it's easy for you to mix and muffle, like, like, it's easy for me to be making a video with y'all right now. And in, in the back of my subconscious, I'm thinking about that other video that hit 300 views or, you know what I'm saying? It's easy for me to compare the two videos when they're two different entities. Same, same me, but those videos are two different works, bodies of art. Two di I made them at two different times of the day. I posted them at two different times. So... It's so many reasons why your next couple of videos ain't gonna hit what that video hit. So you wanna, if anything, just stay out of your emotions about that altogether. And I go for everything in life. And I always talk, tell y'all, talking to women, posting YouTube videos, posting Instagram photos, you know what I'm saying? Conversating with people. You might conversate with somebody and then they act like they love you to death. And then you conversate with them the next very couple seconds and then they acting like they, you know, it's a problem. But like I'm telling you, that all is depending on how you put your emotions out on the table or if you just looking at it as whatever. Like if I don't, if I touch one view on this video, I should feel the same if I'm touching a million. And that's how you, that's how you really dictate your growth. Like that's how you really where to double down because it really doesn't matter. You know, how many people died and left earth without even seeing any success in anything? So why does it matter? Like we don't need to see success to be happy. Like you could just be happy. So that's that's like a, a lesson. And, um, but you do wanna succeed while you're here. And so if that's the case, like this video, comment, let me know how y'all think about this topic and subscribe to the family. You know what I'm saying? But it seems like it's a pretty sun. It's getting the sun. The sun is still shining and stuff like that. It's my niece. This is my nephew name and my niece name right here. I got this when I was in high school. Um. Yeah, but you don't got to be no big party guy to make a YouTube channel and make some money off. You don't got to be nothing you not. You just got to do you. That's it. That's the only rule. Uh, every day, like, sometimes I, I focus on that. I'll be like, dang, I want my channel to see me outside. Or I want them to see me at the gym. Or, 
that's all coming, bro. Like, that's not extinct. That's not nothing that you got to trip over right now. Because like I said, I don't seen it millions of times. People grind right in their own room, make content over and over. Because what I'm talking about, as long as it matter to me, somebody going to view it. You, they might not even <laughs> like it. Cool. I'm cool with that. But, you know, the views is what matter on YouTube for, for the views. So, um, consistency should never be an issue. It shouldn't. And it, it, it will if you're coming out of a dark space in your life, a dark time. The consistency going to be messed up because, like, like this video, creating a schedule for yourself, I'm going to probably call it that. It's layers to this building the schedule because even me, I, you know, I created a schedule at the beginning of this year or before that, and and like like I said, y'all as a as a channel helping me grow, like y'all helping me, you know, it feels better with the channel. It feels better with the channel, and uh, as I clean my life, as I cleanse my life. And as I as as I as I do that, the hell and do those things like that, it's like my room is getting cleaner too and stuff like that. But I want to put on my schedule Monday through Sunday, which I don't think I got up there, is to clean my room like every other day, like or at least like four out of seven. You know what I'm saying, like. Maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, I might just do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and maybe Sunday. I don't know. Monday, Friday, because it's easier to post when your room is clean. It's easier to it's easier to feel like because like psychologically as humans, you shouldn't care what people think, but but psychologically, it's a little thing there. Like, it's a little thing there. Like, you should not even care, though, like, to be quite honest. Like, if you're wrong, dirty, you still post. But it's like a little thing there where you know your life could be better and more organized. And when, I, when I'm, you know, it's, just, it's also good for the soul, good for the spirit, like, to just have that cleanse, like, that um, space, like, I like space. I don't like claustrophobia. I just had to pick up a couple things just now around the room. But I said to myself, I said, dang, if it was on my schedule to do it Monday through Sunday, you know, because I'm doing this big schedule thing where I talk to my supporters about schedules all the time. So, you know, I don't got that on my schedule. And I feel like it should be at the top of the morning. It shouldn't be... It's 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. right now. It shouldn't really be. Like, it's cool right now, but it should be, like, at 12, if that, like, 12, 1 o'clock. It should be, like, a little earlier where you, you know, fixing your bed at least. Just knowing what you're going to wear or whatever the case, like. And that's just, you know. And then what's, what's weird with me I know I might do that and then feel like, you know, this is how my emotions be working. Like, cause I study it. Like, I know how they how they move now. I'll fix something over here, and then I'll feel still like, don't post. Like some memory used to be like, don't don't post today. You cleaned your room, but the, like I like to move slow and I like for things to build up. So as soon as I fix a problem, it seems like another one that has to be there. Somebody. All right, the girl upstairs is the girl upstairs is yelling. That's what's going on. And um, she a little, she a little, she a little, she a little decent or whatever. You know, I ain't gonna lie. Spanish chick upstairs or whatever. Uh, but uh yeah, she's a little decent or whatever. She, you know. But uh 
Yeah. The schedule, man, like, it's important, bro. Like, it just is. It just is, bro. It just is, bro. Because organization, organization Mm -hmm. equals success. Don't let nobody disorganize you, including yourself. Look at my hair. You know, I could shape it up. I could, you know. But like I said, it's always, what's funny about life is that you got to manage it because on the left hand side, you got the stuff that's going to just come out of nowhere. Like I just said, oh, look at my hair. I ain't feel like this earlier or yesterday, but it was a thought. But that thought didn't have to matter. But since we talking about it, right, now all of a sudden that's something I might do, right? But everything is time consuming. That's what the video about, you know what I'm saying? Everything, that's why the schedule is so near and dear right now because everything is time consuming. So how do you, how do you um, skip over that part? You can't. You know, when you're building yourself up and you're trying to become the best version of yourself, whatever. A lot of y'all get a lot more women and dates if y'all if y'all thought like this, like, because even me, like, I noticed like women never thought I was ugly, but one thing they might have thought was like, yo, he's he got time on his hands and that's not attractive, or he really want me right now, or whatever. And that that's what it be. Even all this narcissistic stuff we talk about, like, it's the time you have for it. Like, narcissistic shit, I am excuse my French, narcissistic stuff been on this planet forever. So, you know, Jezebel been here forever. So, you know what I'm saying? It's not nothing new. But Jezebel ain't can't really mess with somebody who don't got time to be being played with. It's a spirit, though, so... It come through any anywhere, anytime, but you already know if you're in the company of people you handcraft picked, you know, you can't pick your family, as they tell you. You can't do it. And that's the frustrating part, right? That's where the devil wanna get you lodged into a situation where you don't got no money, you don't got no income, you're not on your stuff, and you at some family member house. And that's jail. That's just a different type of jail, but that's where you at. And so in order to change that, you got to build up friendships in the situation you in, building them friendships up, being distracted, being sidetracked, being annoyed, being bothered, you know, being whatever the case. And you got to find people who really about to just stick with you because that's one thing I found, like, it's certain friends I was meeting off of Bumble, and I'm like, cool, this person cool, this person cool, but either I wouldn't really feel like, you know, like I would feel something or I would feel like they would feel like it'd be like this, you know, crevice there of like not, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't really explain, like I can explain it, let me, it was like this, it's like this, it might've been an emotion, I ain't gonna lie. Cause I just really learned how to master the emotions more. So it definitely probably was some type of feeling in the air of like, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know how I'm gonna, you know, move around and go to this church yet with this. Cause it'd be a church guy. I remember one of them was a church guy. And it's still, sometimes I run into people and they'd be cool, but it'd be like, I'm not really where I want to be in life. My finances and whatnot and certain things. So I really don't even really got time to really be just hanging with you anyway. But if it's the right person, then it'll give me, a, um, like I said, a feeling of like, well, this can't hurt. You know what I'm saying? And that's important. You know what I'm saying? I feel like um, it's managing. Like, right, What? how much could you manage right now? If I'm hanging with 30 people, you got to be ready to hang with 30 people. And you're talking to someone like me who never really been, you know, hanging with too many people besides my neighborhood. So I had to find out balance. I had to get my feet grounded in this 
to really even learn how to talk better and communicate more and just be more of a leader too. Like, cause you, you hang with people, they'll start leading the whole situation. And now, you know, the situation is led, the whole day has been gone, vanished. And cause you kind of like getting caught up in what they got going on and you ain't really, so all of it, you know, but I've been kind of snowballing this. Like I said, working on my schedule, going off, you know, hitting women up and hitting friends up and figuring it out slowly but surely. And I think I'm going to rise into a point where, like I just told you, I just got text from, from my bro. He um, lived like an hour away from me or whatnot. And we follow each other on Snapchat, follow each other on Instagram. And, like, I already could tell bro is, like, a match for me, like, as a bro. like, And so... Like, I know, just like I know what type of woman, like, you got to figure that out with dating. Like, it's the same thing with the bros. Like, you got to, you got to type, like, and a lot of people don't be thinking, like, they don't, they don't, they don't know it. Because even me, like I said, in my neighborhood, I never thought like that. I always looked at it like we all was bros. And it was going to be certain ones I'm going to cling to more. And that's going to cling to me more. But at the same time, I'm not thinking too much about that at all. When you're outside, but you're not thinking about that. You just see, see, you just see who tend to, like, if, if I had a bro named Keon at one point and his mom would let him stay the night and my mom, but the other bros wouldn't let that happen. So the other bros mom wouldn't really be letting me stay every day the way my mom and his mom had this like psychological connection somehow where it's like, oh, well, hi, he can stay tonight. He can stay. And it was just like, you know, it was, it was like, yo, like, that's just how it went. And like, so it's going to be certain people who that's like stuff like that is, you know, certain commonalities and stuff like that. You know, you cut hair and bro's a photographer or something, man. He need a haircut and, you know, these things manifest. But all together, like I said, if you're not cleaning your room, if you're not staying intact, if you're not, you know, if you don't got a life that you feel like is built to a percent that you feel like is 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 uh cleanliness, like it's cleaned up, like it's fixed up for you so you could stand high in that lifestyle then you got to think when people come around you that they're going to feel that they're going to smell that and they're going to be like, man, I can't really, cause it's not really, it's not really fun. And it's not really, not even fun, but it's not really no value. Like I like the word value. It's not really no, uh, it's not nothing here for me type situation. And that's not something that you should even care too much about, but it's something that, at this age, I'm at, I'm not going to just hang with you for no reason. If I'm going to hang with somebody, I'm going to put my best foot forward to show them why they should hang with me type situation. Like, I'm not going to just be a grown man and hang with you and we just sit on my bed and watch TV and talk or smoke weed. Or It's not going to be like, it's not no kid. I'm not a kid. So, like, if we're going to, like, go to the gym, go to the bar, like, it got to be, like, action. We got to have motion. And I know y'all been hearing that word lately, have emotion. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Every every human should have their own motion at a certain percentage of motion before you even set up a, a, a plans with somebody. Like, where are you going? You don't got no car. Where are you going? How you how you moving around without no car? How you doing that? Now, I know it's possible. It's definitely possible, but that's not me. I'm not, I mean, I got a skateboard and I skated around when I first came home. I skated around downtown. I hopped on a city bus and I was maneuvering around. You know what I'm saying? City buses was free at the time. I don't know if they're still free right now. But I'm happy regardless right now. You know what I'm saying? If y'all look at some of my older content, y'all can see me being downtown a little bit. But, you know, I'm trying to get my own crib. I'm trying to get my own car, my own stuff. So 
moved to my own city. A lot of y'all still live in your mom city, the city she picked for y'all to live in. For her to, for, for, she ain't pick it for you. She picked it for her. And if you're over 18, like, comment, subscribe. You should be working on how am I going to get to Houston? How am I going to get to Nevada? How am I going to get to Pennsylvania? How am I going to... These should be questions that you are pondering because most of y'all don't even study geography. Most of y'all don't even study um, that, that the maps and the, you know, like stuff like that is important. You should know that North... Uh, North Carolina is right next to Atlanta. You should know by, you could go to Google Maps and download, you know, the thing. I mean, go to Google, type in map of the 50 states or whatever. And then um, that's how you get started by looking at that. You know, like, okay, I was in New York. That was next to PA. That was next to Pennsylvania. I was, I was over. So then you start to just get familiar with that. You know, look at that once a week or something. And what you're doing is you're building up what I would call like a courage. Because say you, you know, as an adult, any moment you can be stranded without any food or anything. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be able to know exactly where you at and exactly what's going on at all times. And you know, a lot of y'all got fear of traveling and all that stuff. And y'all gotta y'all gotta fix that. You know, fix that. You know what I'm saying? Fix that. But stay organized in the meantime, and that's what this video is about. Cause when you stay organized, it's not nothing that you can't do. Cause a lot of y'all already got the motivation. Y'all just need the organization. Motivation needs organization. Because when it's organized motivation, then it's easy to post. It's easy to get to the video. It says, I don't even need a shirt. Sometimes I'm thinking, oh, let, me, let me find something. You don't even need a shirt. You just need the direction and the topic. You know how many famous YouTubers walk, they don't ever put on no shirt. They just be posting. I watched a whole vlog somebody yesterday. He didn't have on no shirt. And you have people in this house. This is a video, bro. You got to swim in it. You got to do it regardless. No matter what, you know, is going on in your life, just post it. You bought a new fish, post it. You're going for a five-minute walk, post it. Even drama and stuff like that could be posted because I know a lot of people... That's where the that's where the content is really at a lot of the time. You know, you got a problem with somebody, you either could bring it in, you could talk about it yourself, or you could just let it, you know, be on camera, whatever. That'd be good content a lot of the time. So a lot of the time we sleep on the art. We love to do it. We love to, you know, we love to create, but we sleep on the simplicity that is already in front of us. Because you don't think that you can make, you don't think you can make a million dollars for being simple. You think you got to come up with something that's worth a million dollars. But you really don't. You have to just be happy every day. Cause life is gonna go in directions regardless. It's gonna go. It's gonna go in directions regardless. You just gotta kind of do the refereeing of it and sweeping it to the right, you know, where you want it to go. People gonna text you. Girls gonna want you. You know what I'm saying? Friends gonna want you. Wanna hang with you. Whatever. You just got to move it and propel it the right way. But it's so easy to get caught up in that lower frequency. My, that mind, your, um, 
your lower self. That's just what they call it. Where you're like carnally thinking and you're thinking about stuff. Because even after I'm, I post this video, I'm back into just me, myself, and I without this positive message, right? This positive message, which is really just a message. But once I cut the video off, now I got now it's tough again, right? Now I gotta figure out my next this and that. And some things you may not even be ready to do, ready to face. You know, you might wanna talk to that girl, but how you know you got the nuts to do it yet? How you know like so that's where a lot of the Satan come in and and get to talking to you and you know what I'm saying? Because you gotta 24-7 stay motivated. It's not it's not partial. It's it's one hundred percent all the time, every time. And if you got any deficiencies, you gotta pick up on it. Cause it's not like going to the doctor where you go to the doctor and they tell you which was hot, what was good and what's low. You're your own doctor when you don't really you know, going around society all the time when you be a little bit of a loner, you're your own doctor. You got to ask yourself via shadow work or journaling. And I'm not always promoting this and whatever, but sometimes you just can't see your deficiencies when you're alone all the time. So even hanging or, or building your friend groups, you want your friends who y'all could, you know, you want different ones for different things. That's why you got to keep putting the fishing rod out there and collecting more people because you want to fill in them gaps. Like, okay, well, my friend who picked me up, we go to farmer's market and get food. My friend who want to go to the gym. My friend, and don't put all of your wants and needs on one person because that's, that's real easy to do real quick because you're not used to dealing with that volume of people. You're used to dealing with four or five people. But but as you're over 18, like I say, you know what I'm saying? You got to build some idea of like what's a proper amount of people. What's enough, basically? What's enough? Y'all can comment below. Let me know what y'all think. What's enough? What's an enough amount of people of friends? You know what I'm saying? Like, how many is uh, a adult worthy amount? You know, how how much is too much? How much is too less? Um, I really think like 20 friends, 18 friends is a good amount. You know what I'm saying? I really think like that. Like, um, and when I say friends, is is like they all different. Like I said, they all fit into different types of friends, different people. But you just got to think about it. Like, if your life has changed since kid to adult, your family's still your family, but your family even, you know, going to change because some people are going to die. Some people are going to change and some people are going to turn this way and that way. And, and if you don't, you know what I'm saying, develop your own mojo, your own, you know, situation, then, then you're going to get caught in you know, wishing things didn't change. And that's, that's like, in my opinion, that's like, just not, it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's four o'clock right now, 4.10. I'm about to go ahead and end this video. Um, But like I said, let me go ahead before I end this video and go ahead and go to my notes. I'm on that right now. It says Monday, schedule, daily life schedule, Monday, frugivore, meaning I'm not supposed to eat anything today that's not fruit. And I've been trying to stick to that, but I know that that's, to me, and uh, it's not impossible. It's, 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 but I, what I'm going to tell y'all right now is out of all the food in the house right now, it's probably 10% fruit in the house. So even though it's not impossible, 
psychologically it looks that way to me. And it seems it's coming off that way. So I'm just gonna let y'all know now. It, it feels that way. And like I said, that's not to blame nobody. Cause I'm not buying the food here. I'm not really buying the food, so I can't really point and do none of that. But that's when the fasting kinda is a a tool. That's when the fasting is a tool. But um, you could fast and stuff like that. But like I said, it get real boring when you don't got no money. Like when you don't got no money, it get boring because you might fast and then. It's like you're on a pendulum still because you fast, but then you go back to whatever, you know, you just like it swings. So you, what you want to do is you want to establish some, you want that swinging to just, you want it to slow down. Might not come to a complete stop, but you want it to slow down and get to a point where it's like, okay, I got more control over it now. And like I said, as you building your friendships and stuff, like I always ask my friends this, don't judge me. As soon as we get to talking, like, yo, what's your diet look like? And I know that's a weird question, but I, I, I definitely throw it in if they if I know they work out. If I know they work out, then I'm it's definitely an easy segue in. But if we just talking about clothes or something, you no. Know, but it, you know, it's not that weird. It's not that weird especially where I'm coming from because I talk to a lot of people. So like, even if you think something, I say weird, who cares? Uh, okay, I, if you don't want to run off just because I asked you, what do you like to eat? You don't know if I'm about to say, bro, you want to go out to eat or anything. You just going So I, I tend to ask that because like I said, the type of person I am, the type of lifestyle I live, I think that that's uh, one of my, um, you know, expectations right now for people to just have a, a decent diet. That's it. You could you could eat because uh, my friend I'm talking to right now, he, he uh, I think he, uh, when I, I look on his Snapchat, like uh, he uh, eat what he want, you know what I'm saying? But he, he, uh, he eat healthy though. Same time, he eat healthy. So, so that's a good thing to me, and uh, that's, that's that's good. That mean that later in life, I don't gotta really, I don't gotta, I don't never gotta ask that or question that or feel like I gotta eat this way, and then I'm hanging with somebody who eating a burger or something like. It's like while I'm eating this, I'm smelling the burger, and it's like triggering old memories and. Yeah, you know, y'all just don't know how the psyche work, bro. I study this stuff. I know it. So when you really get good at talking to people, it's a blessing because you could really choose from a bigger pot of people. Like, who do you really want to hang with? And uh, it's just important, bro. So like I said, it's Monday right now, and I added fast in there. So on Monday, I fast or I do food. So those are the two options I got. And I had to put fast in there to make it another option so I could broaden that a little bit because when things feel like, oh, you have to just be on this fruit thing, but this is all, nothing, in, it's nothing to eat but, but a little bit of fruit, nothing but bananas in there. Psychologically, that makes you feel defeated somewhere like, oh, damn, I only access I got some bananas and once I eat that, that's only going to make me want to eat that, something else. So to add that fast in there is a, another oomph of like space where I could say, okay, I might not eat anything. And then I might break the fast with a banana. If, if you know, then so my Monday is kind of taking care of it uh, there. And I want to start to bring more uh, diet to this channel because when you're trying to do it without talking to nobody, it's, it's, it's just, 
it's not easy. It's not hard sometimes, but sometimes it, it definitely has its moments where, you, where you're going to crave and you're going to feel away. So, um, yeah, that's how my Monday looking right now as far as food. Um, my overall mission today is to meet new people, opportunities, build strong social circles. Da, 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 da. I'm already on that. I already been on the app Bumble today. I already done uh sent out like messages and matched certain people and stuff like that. And then you building up you building up your matches, you know, just like any other dating app or whatever, you building up the matches. And then you just, I, what I do, I just lead them to the text. That's it. Yo, what's up, bro? You seem cool. Here's my number text. Because I'm trying to defeat the devil overall. In life, in general. So, I already know if I'm if I'm communicating to positive people who got calm spirits, then I already know that that's going to balance itself up. I already know, so... That's what I'm aiming for. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep a goal in mind. And it, it helps when you're reminded of them goals. So let 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 the enemy and let your past and all that negativity remind you to keep going forward. That's it. You don't got to get mad at a hater. You just got to let them, let them be what they are. Let them hate. Let them be mad. That's what they, that's what they, that's what they, that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. We're not their parents. We're not their none of that. Let them do what they want to do. All too often, we feel like we got to be accepted by somebody who don't accept themselves. I'm not doing that this year. But anyway, um, yeah, so having friends for different things, man, different, different, different things. And that could be a little bit feel slow at first, but when you get in the uh, the mode of talking to more people and like I said, leading them directly to your phone and just get get more conversations going, more more text threads going <laughs> with time and you'll see like, yo, I really got better at what to say in a scenario and when they say this, say that and you learn how to play with more uh, speed and just play faster you know, text faster and, you know, respond faster without overthinking or whatever. And it's just momentum. <clears throat> um, I also said today is a no fly zone, meaning I'm not sharing today with anyone. Uh, a lot of y'all are in enmeshed, enmeshed relationships with people who y'all don't really want to hang with or maybe you shouldn't even be hanging with but i dedicated my monday for myself i said this is a day a no fly zone day and i got a couple of these during my week where i'm not dealing with nobody it's it, it's really meant for the narcissistic folks but it's not meant for everybody like like i said but it's you know y'all know who is who in y'all life and they even know who they are so remember that. And uh, with all this information that I, that I spewed out in front of y'all in this video, all I did was read the top, the top of the thing. You know what I'm saying? The top. And it gives me, I would say direction or uh, yeah, like like when you open a new uh, thing that you got to put together, a toy or something, it gives you directions on how to put it together. That's kind of what that first bulk of information at the top is. And then when I scroll down, it's my morning, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 12 a.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, 4, 8 o'clock. And by, you know, after that, you get to go into sleep and you should be winding down. But to bring this video full 360, 
I talked to y'all when I first started this video. I started off talking about how my sleep schedule had took in a turn. And even to this day, it's still not quite on point. But I'm fine with it because I see the direction that is flooding back towards. It's going back towards where it came from. And I can sense it and I can smell it and I can see it. And it all comes from starting small and trying to build this structure, this structure that I bring to y'all today. Uh, and like I said, I'm not done because a lot of stuff in that, um, time span of me not being on point took place. Like I said, it was probably five years ago when I stopped and, and my schedule was off and I kind of felt defeated and I wasn't making money. I wasn't working. I wasn't doing much. And <laughs> at the end of the day, um, Everything I do on this channel is just to touch bases with y'all, with myself, on what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like when you go on Facebook and you see the, they say, what's what's on your mind? That's what I'm doing with y'all because this is what vlogging is about. Even if it's not outside right now and it's not fancy, it doesn't matter because this is what it's about. It's about actually looking at and examining what's going on in your life what did you struggle with you know bring that you know talk about it because i know i struggle with a couple of things I, I know i could tell y'all a couple of things i struggle with uh therapy is something called enmeshment like i told you a lot of y'all are in that right now it's just when you read in people's minds you can't really read people's mind, but you think you know what they're thinking. You be, when you around people, do you think you know what they're thinking? Because like I always bring it back to the basis. I say I'm a man, but I was raised by women. And what I've come to this uncomfortable truth as I've grown older, I found like the whole time you talk to your mom the wrong way. Because she's going to use her emotions, but as a kid, you were supposed to, as a kid, you needed to understand emotions. You needed to feel and have empathy at a certain level. And maybe you didn't even need it, but it felt like you needed it. But as you know, as you approach them older ages, that should be ejected away. It should be 100% out. You know what I'm saying? That's like venom. That's like snake venom. Should be all the way out. And you should only be relating to stoicism and detachment from what other people are going through, what they're feeling, and all of that. And that's an invisible principle that most young men can't even figure out or distinguish. But it's not just for men, it's for humans in general. But I bring that to the table and to tell y'all that's something that I go through. It's just like, and I'm sure a lot of y'all, even when you flirting with women, whatever, the reason why y'all mess up a lot of time, because y'all start to read their mind. Or, or I, I know she probably thought I, when I did that, it meant this. But guess what you just did as soon as you allowed your mind to think whatever she was thinking? You left the present moment which is the red flag, you jumped into, you was triggered by something she said or did, and that made you start to predict instead of just to be in the, um, do whatever it is you want to do and call and know exactly what you want to do from the beginning to the end and just do everything like a movie script, one, two, three, four, five, and just do it all the way out to the end. And so when you when you don't do things like that, 
what happens is that you become trained by life that every time you try to do something, it's going to crack instead of be frequent. Like when I played chess, I had to learn that. It's about freak, being frequent with your... If, if I know, okay, there, here's the beginning in my mind, and here's how I'm going to play the middle, and here's how I'm going to play the end. That means no matter who my opponent is, I'm going to do the beginning this way, the middle, and then the end this way. Now, there's going to be a couple ad-libs that if he go this way instead of the way I plan for him to go, then I'm going to move this way. And I got to even decide if I'm going to stick to my plan and move him back where I need him to be for me to keep doing what I'm doing, or if I'm going to let him do whatever he want to do while I change my plan. And I, what do they call that? In football, they call that a, a call up. It's called an audible. You know what I'm saying? I, I audited the situation. I changed it in mid play. So psychologically, that's a lot to handle for someone who's not thinking logically in the first place. If you're thinking emotionally, if you're talking to a woman and she said, and she did something and you allow that to throw you off, then that means that you're now in the feminine. And so if you keep starting masculine, but then going into the feminine, then you figuring out over time, like, bro, I'm really never able to stay consistent. That's really what your body and your and your everything is picking up on. That you can never just stay solid and just roll with the punches and, and overpower situations. And that could create a very damaging perspective that you have about yourself and life. And so that's what I bring with y'all today. And when I tell you I'm working on these aspects of life because a man is nothing but frequent, frequent. Like, you know, stoic. To be stoic, it means to be unmovable. That means to be steady, to be frequent, to be you know, whole or whatever. And it becomes impossible when you're hanging around people who are chiseling away at your armor. So you got to build yourself up. Even if it's affirmations, prayer, and it's, it's 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 weapons to do that too, but you have to have a you got to be sold on it. Like I'm not gonna argue, I'm not gonna do this no more. I'm gonna do you know you got to stay in the, and stick with what you tell yourself, and that could be very claustrophobic sometimes, but. If the more you do it, the more it becomes possible. And I know that to be true, because the more I started talking to women, the more the, there was no fear at all. I become a professional at it. It's just like anything else, like when you become good at flipping burgers or whatever you do, same thing. You might still get that first glimpse of fear, but then that junk it subdues because you already been there 10 million times and you're going to be there 10 million more times within the next couple of months. So it's like, uh, I could choose at this point what I'm going to feel if I'm going to feel anything. And like I said, like, we can not feel anything if we want. I think that's the more, I really believe not feeling anything is the more adult thing after 18, bro. Like, should not really feel anything. You know what I'm saying? That sounds crazy. You know, when you raised by a woman, it's like, well, well, all I ever knew was to be somewhat in a in some type of emotion because that was just the algorithm that was just what it was because how else are they going to relate to me if i'm not 
relating and hearing them in that way and kind of um kind of um like i don't gotta be feminine or nothing but you're still gonna you know be in touch with your emotions a little bit because you gotta you gotta feel for the woman and where she coming from and all that stuff but it's like that's that's really not necessarily true all the time you know what I'm saying? Not all the time. And from that, from that stoicism, you could still be a nice guy. That's what I want to end this video on because a lot of people don't don't believe that, and that's why the world so it's just changing how it's changing because a lot of moms don't even think that you know. They think that you being manly could be bad, but it's like it can be, but it could also be a very useful. Uh, it could be the right thing. So I don't know, like you shouldn't even, but this video isn't about that because you don't want permission to be who you are. You want to give yourself permission to be who you are at whatever percentage you want to be what you are at. So you a man, but you a man raised by a woman. So you want to be in your stoicism 24 seven that's a good thing. That's a smart thing. But then you want to also know, like, well, if I ever got to hear a woman out, then I'm going to use that other side of me to go ahead and see where she coming from. Or, or you know, I don't want to I don't want to give up who I am to see where she coming from, though. That's where it becomes more of a magic trick than a, a conversation, because now you're compromising your own structure that God built you on, your own foundation, just so you could hear where someone else is coming from and where they're coming from might change. They might, you know, because women are emotional and they might say something and then they go ahead and be like, no, I don't feel like that no more. And you don't, you don't abandon it your own thing that but as a man you got to stay steady in what you're doing every day every day 24 7 and that's why i'm making this video because it's do do good bad and ugly it's still 24 7 that's what i'm trying to let y'all see like it don't really matter if it rained today i think it rained yesterday it really don't matter what goes on because it's still 24 I don't really care what go on, it's still going to be 24. And the day someone proved to me that it's going to be 25 or 23, then that's when I could finally say, okay, you're right. Let me take a break. Let me be nice. Let me be more feminine. Let me, let me be more agreeable. But I don't have to do that, luckily. And I could still reap the benefits of being a, a, a decent moral human, but not being a pushover. And it happened so fast for you to be pushed over. That's what I'm trying to say. But wait, not even by women, but by your own self first, because women are not the problem, guys. I ain't gonna lie, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's really, because nine times out of 10, if you a man, you a man even if the circumstances is un in, not in your favor. And that's what we need to start looking at. Because it, when as soon as you complain or look to the circumstance, what that does is it creates a glue. It, it's a, like a glue-like substance, and it stops you from ever elevating and becoming whatever that next phase is, whatever it is. Whatever it is, you because life is full, full of surprise. You don't know, but you can't elevate from the glue so the glue gotta chip off by you being fresh and being renewed or whatever and that's why i make this video create y'all a schedule create y'all a daily schedule and fine tune it like i just said about the the glue falling off of it i had to add some stuff to mine today y'all just see me add a little bit of stuff i might add some more to my monday i might take away but i'm never gonna put too much up there to where it feels like unachievable, but I'm never going to have just like nothing up there. 
but you got to have a percentage. And I love when I use that word because when I say percentage, it's a beautiful word because it really shows you when I say that how crafty life is. And so it shows you that you could be doing the right thing the wrong way. So just because you took the vitamins, but you ain't take the percentage you were supposed to take, that could be fatal, right? So same thing. If you want to cure your life, at what percentage do I need to be doing this? That's what you want to really ask yourself. Am I doing this enough or not? And don't get discouraged by the answer, but look at it and keep it a buck. Oh, now I'm not really talking to enough women. I'm not asking enough women to come to my place for me to actually make the statement that this is not working. I can't say it because it's not working at this percentage, but it's, if I put the percentages up and I tell five women instead of two to come through, then I up the percentage that I'm trying to reach my goal. Then I change the trajectory of the whole, my whole life. So I love the word percentages because I never really used that word to analogy, to, to uh, imagine what I'm doing wrong. Because if you even write that down and think like of percentages, it can help you to feel more in tune with what you are and not doing. Because a lot of times the reason why you're not doing a certain thing is because you never did it all your life. So that percentage all your life been strangled out and, and drained out from the very beginning of time. And you have never even noticed it. So you being bold or you being an alpha male, or you being the leader of the team or you being this or whatever that is possible on earth becomes impossible because that percentage that we talk about is that it's been at a donut. It's been at zero since a baby and on up and you don't got to turn it to a hundred because that's impossible. But turning it to my therapist would say a 90 degree angle. You know what I'm saying? Like turning it to a percentage like, and looking at, okay, well, at this, if I look at it at this percentage, what would be a good action today I can make from this percentage that will fit into right now and I could kind of like grow? You see know what I'm saying? I could kind of grow and kind of um, just, just today, right? I could grow 2%, 3% more. I could grow a little bit. Because you don't got to do it all in, you know, a day. That's the secret in the sauce. Like, I do a little bit more. Because all I really care to see is what's the difference between this day and this day. I don't really care about nothing else. Everything else is dramatics. That's drama. I just want to know at what, what's the science? What, what percentage did this not help me or help me by me doing this. And so we got to be our own doctor sometimes. Sometimes we got to take out a piece of paper and a pen and tally mark it and look at like, you know, what is your goal? And what are you doing to make that goal even possible? Are you doing anything? In 24 hours in a day, are you doing anything? Like you say you want to have a, you know, a healthier this, a healthier that. Well, then you got to ask yourself, what's the first, very first step? Like, you got to be particular. Like, what's the first step that I could do right now to get closer to that goal? And if I, and I, I'm telling you, like, I'm telling myself as well. And what makes this hard sometimes, and I'm going to say this before I go, like I told y'all earlier, every time you try to make a move of perfection or bettering or whatever, there's going to be a, a something on the back of you doing that that's going to come up to the surface that's going to fill or try to bring homeostasis or balance back to you being a loser. And that is going to be at work and you got to watch that. 
You got to just watch that. Watch for that. Because when you learn to watch for that, when you learn to watch for that, what that does is it creates uh, a ball. You're going to boss up. Because you're going to do the thing you wanted to do, and then you're going to take your mind and place it and ask yourself, where is that needle going to come from to burst my bubble from doing something right? And then you got to watch, and then like a snake is going to try to, it's going to be something crafty. But then if like, especially if you do shadow work or journaling, you could catch that, you could like blow it up, look at it, and like, like yo, this, this, I, I caught the, I caught the uh, the worm, you know what I'm saying? I caught the worm that was was eating away at my success for years. And you're going to have to be, uh, like my therapist would call it, self-differentiated from that, whatever that worm is. So, like I said, say you want to talk to more women, but then you talk to more women, but then you find out that Okay, most of these women, they don't have cars either. So now you got another. It's just always something too, but it's like, so you got to kind of like, because there's no problem that's too big. So it's like, you got to kind of be, like I said, like prepared somehow, some magical, majestical way. You got to just be prepared for it. And like I said, you got to frequently be doing that, talking to more because the more you talking, the more doing more, doing more, you realize, like, I'm flying. No, nah, no, nah, but you really realize, like, yo, I'm do you doing more, and it's like, doing with, with, this is the beautiful thing about life. With doing more comes seeing more. So, and I, we always slip and forget about this part of, you know, a skill or a craft or whatever. When you do more, you really start to see more stuff that you could not see when you wasn't doing whatever that thing was. But as you start to catch what it is that is happening, like I said, because your mind starts to think on different degrees and levels, you start to look at what it is and fall in love because you start to fall in love with these little details of the game or whatever it is. Because you you see value in the details because you're like, yo, with this one little detail, not only can I have girls pull up or come through, but I can set that up and market it and change it in a way where women really want to pull up. If you understand, if, if you think like a mastermind is what I'm really trying to tell you, but you got to you got to have that ability and that and, and, and because. Most people are not going to take the time to, to make stuff sound good or feel good. or And that's all YouTube is about, too. Like, like making it sound good and feel good. And it's not fake. That's the part that's the like the catch-22. Because it's like... Um, It is everything. Here's the thing. It's social media. And so if that's up to every individual, whether they think social media is fake or real. But we've seen, and this is a debate that we was having on Meet Me one day with this girl and there was a couple other guys in there and the girl was like, all this internet stuff is fake. Like she was just like having this like outgoing opinion about how fake the internet is and I knew it was like a, some form of a projection to get the guys to get away from her and stuff like that. But uh, the internet is not fake, bro. If you say the wrong disrespectful stuff to the wrong person over the internet, it's coming to you in real life. And so I get where her perspective was. Her perspective was more so like, I'm a female and I would rather meet a guy in real life than to meet him off of this app. Okay, well, you can say that. That sounds more ple appeasing to my emotions or whatever. To guys, that, that we could we could we could understand that. But if you say it's all fake, then that's 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 not fair because there's men who made careers off of the internet. There's men who and women, podcasts, YouTubers, 
dating coaches, you know, life is it goes on. So she was doing a form of projection or whatever, but that's why I say none of this stuff is fake. Even the fake is real. It couldn't be real, very real. And even the very real could be very fake. Like that's why Lauren Hill said everything is everything, because if it's your life, as you should be taking your life personal, because it's your life, you should understand that people have the right to their own opinions. And that is very freeing because that means I have 100 percent copyright on I own my own uh, opinion. And so that means that, like I said, I can market my opinions. I'm just giving y'all some game right now. I'm giving y'all some game. Because I don't really even be marketing. When I come to y'all and I talk, I don't be marketing much. Y'all see me right now, I'm dressed, whatever. I don't market much. I just come and I tell y'all the real. You know, I don't try too hard. But there's going to come a time it's very, very soon where I am putting my best foot forward with y'all. Like, a call, I'm going to be at the pinnacle of creativity. And y'all can already hear probably how I talk, how, how my mind works and how that's very possible. But I'm just saying this is the type of stuff that women love, too, because women are emotion-based. 90% of the consumers for shopping comes from women because they're emotional. And the men that are emotional get wrapped up in that too. That's why I made this video too, like separating yourself from emotions, bro. That'll help you out and heal you as a man. Welcome home. Welcome home. But, but like I said, Whenever you heal something, fix something, something else is now kind of filling in that that hole of that resistance where it was once at. And you have to watch and be vigilant. What's next? What might become next? When I'm playing chess, I'm always thinking like that. What might happen next? Because it's not what just happened, it's what's about to happen. And whatever is about to happen, Please let it be something that's controllable. That's kind of how I be feeling. Let it be something slight. Don't let it be something too attack attackative. And I don't know if that's a word or not. But if somebody do something that's too attackative, then I might just feel an emotion by accident. And then once I feel an emotion, I might just be in this very victim-like state where they just start taking advantage and pillaging my victory and just... It's just not, it's not good. So stoicism, staying out of that emotional thing, staying really connected to your own uh, point of view, your own subjectivity. Um, this is more of a speech right now. But we're an hour in. I'm about to end this video. And I'm about to just go, you know, work on the rest of my day. But like I said, y'all can see how the heights that my mind reach and the capabilities that my mind can reach. And why I bring this video, because even when I look back at my schedule, I'm the type of person I got to make my schedule right. Why does it have to be right? Because I have to live in my body and on this earth for however long I got left. And if I'm going to do that, it got to be a little fun. It got to be a little exciting. It got to be a little magical because that's going to bring a, a goodness of emotions to me. And it don't always got to feel good. I'm not going there, but I'm just saying life do feel good when there's some good feelings there sometimes. But as men, we got to start to pull that back. Sometimes you got to break up with that girl in her face, in front of everybody. You got to curse at that girl in front of you. You got to be the stoic jerk. And But it's not on purpose. It's with love. Because we are like God and God is love. But he also has thunder. 
So it's not a, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's what we was missing as kids. We didn't have that reassurance and affirmation that it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be angry. Instead, they were scared when you'll get angry, they'll get scared. And then they made you feel like a monster or, or too masculine or, and that, that, that didn't make you a good person at all. So some things on this uh, bucket on my day on Monday, got to change and stuff. I'm going to swap some stuff out. But in every slot, you know how I got the 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I got the times. In every slot, what I want to do is I want to kind of narrow. I want to narrow the uh, amount of the number of to do things I got in there. So if anything, maybe I might want to do three to four things in each right now three to four and as y'all could tell everything i'm doing is just measurements i'm measuring on what my mind is kind of telling me because my mind all of our minds have the ability to give you hints tips and tricks to better yourself it's just how you use your mind so if i'm thinking in measurements i'm thinking right now like hmm i'm getting a, a hunch or a feeling that i need to pull back just like fishing. You're not fem feminine for fishing, but it, it's some hunch that comes with that, with catching the prey or the food. It's some of a hunch that comes with that. And so, you, you know, you measure, you're like, maybe I'll put it a little too far. Let me pull it back some, let me move it. And it's a feeling, right? It's a feeling, it's a, it's, it's, I can't really say emotion, but it's a hunch, right? So it's the same thing with creating your schedule because it could become like quite like, gray area feeling because no one's around to tell you what to do like in school like it's not written on the wall so you got to kind of create this and you got to you got to be okay with feeling things and be like well I kind of feel like you know but you I'm gonna say this before I go last thing I'm gonna say you want to use your feelings your your hunch hunches but you also want to use a bit of logic and you want those two things to come together to formulate a algorithm of such where I'm getting in the proper things of a day. Um, and I'll probably write because I, I forgot to do this. Um, Well, I really wrote all goals. They're all goals, but like, I wanted to kind of write a different from from the schedules. I wanted to write like a different in a different um, a different placeholder. Like, I wanted to write like goals that I have, and and like, how can I get to the goal? Because sometimes you write the goal. But you don't really write the uh, in between, and the in between matters more than the goal. You gotta write the, okay, I want to do this. Um, how am I gonna do that? Though? Like you see what I'm saying? It's the how. It's the how. Um, I'm gonna call it goals section. Because the things I have on my schedule, let me remind y'all, the things I have in my schedule is not goals. There are things to do in the day that I have a hunch more so about. The goals are different than the hunches. I need y'all to, to distinguish that in, as far as myself too, because sometimes hunches feel like goals and goals are taken as hunch, hunches. So you're like, well, I got a goal to like do this particular thing. But the hunch is muffled in or fused into the goal. But those are two different things. 
your hunches are your hunches and your goals are your goals. One is more of a logical thing. One is more of a feeling. So you want to separate that. Like you really do. You got to separate that. And I just did because I've made that section is called goals section. And I'm going to start in the, in the goals section. It's just really just articulating the goals that uh, that I want to see. Um, it's our, our tick. Articulating is articulating the goals that I want to see come to tuition. I don't really know how to spell that word. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because you got to have some goals. And this could be, uh, and this could be monthly, weekly. It could be monthly, weekly, or daily. But they have to uh, be there because if they're not then technically life's going to fill in. And this is what I'm trying to tell y'all about us. We have emotional fields around us as humans. Therapy taught me this. And in the emotional fields, you have holes in your emotional field where another person has a perfect emotional field with no holes in it. Because you've had people in your life telling you or making you feel guilty or whatever, just kind of like, you've allowed people to kind of penetrate your emotional field. And that kind of made you not full of yourself as much as you need to be to win in life. Because you're going against people in life who's really just not, it's not even that they're full of their self, it's that they're going to come across more full of themselves because their emotional field don't got no dents or creases or nothing is more well-rounded than yours. And you want to take care of your emotional field. And that's a goal, right? That's a daily goal, actually. And that's what I'm, it's a perfect example of what I'm doing right now. Taking care of your emotional field is a daily goal. And I think I mean, obviously, the ways of doing that is self-explanatory a little bit is as far as like if someone tell you that you should be doing this right now. You're kind of telling yourself. I mean, I could do that, but I don't really feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm here. I'm, I'm near. I'm, 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 I'm neither here or there on what you're talking about. If it ain't coming from the source itself. Right. That's self-love. Uh, if it ain't coming from me directly, then it's kind of, like I said, having the ability to detach or be self-differentiated away from whatever they're talking about. Because it's not that what they're talking about right or wrong. <laughs> In fact, like I said, I'm pretty much indifferent to whether it's right or wrong or not. I more so am worried about being focused and swimming in my own first person and those two worlds kind of contradict each other so much that you can only quite heal if you stay away from people who's gonna mess with your emotional field or not stay away because like you got to get better at it you can't just stay away and that's a part of therapy that i have to learn like staying away all it does is it keeps things in place you want to go around people, but you want to go around in your own little way. You got to develop that. It's like style. You want to develop. You want to develop that style. It's like, it's a style at the end of the day. That that comes with. It's like you become immune. It's like you know. It's a style that comes with it. It's like. Like I said, no one taught me how to play chess, so my style is literally. 
organic. Like I've learned the, the, the skill and what to do. And as I just did it, I just did it. And now whatever it looked like to the outside world is what it looked like. And that's kind of how it is when you're around family again or friends. You're back in somehow, you're, you're lodged into the situation again, but you're not taking it serious. And so that emotionality is is heard and felt by the other animals and the other people can pick up on it. They may challenge you harder or not, but you got to stay uh, steadfast in character. Like, this is who I am. I defined myself. All too often growing up, we was not doing that. We was not defining ourselves. So it left a door open for people to tell you who you were, what you are, and things like that. That's all I'm trying to really trying to say. And so, shout out to Kodak. See, I like the rappers that change their life in front of our eyes. You know what I'm saying? And I always like Kodak, my favorite rapper. A Boogie too, he was one of them, but Kodak is my favorite rapper. But I'm just saying, I relate to him on, on, on levels that y'all probably wouldn't even know. And so I say that to say like, you gotta always be ready to be yourself but be able to also adapt and adjust and fit in and fit out. And you're the interchangeable thing. Like you're the one who can tell people, they can't tell you. It seems so possible because it really is possible when you don't got nothing. You're not vigilant on that aspect of life. Like I am the teller. I am the bank teller. Like. I tell you the amount of energy I have for whatever the thing is that you're trying to do. That's where they tell you it would take two to tangle, but if you're not there, then you're still going to tangle because they're going to pull you into tangling because you're not there to stop that situation from going on. But you have to show up for yourself and be present and let people know, I don't feel like doing this. Sorry. Go get somebody else. And that is like, it's so, so beautiful. And um, it's true adulthood, you know what I'm saying? The emotionality of an adult. Because emotional, because adult adulthood really ain't thinking, really. If you think about it which is ironic. It's really more of a feeling. And I know I said what I said earlier, but what I mean by that is this. As an adult, you don't got the luxury to think about getting up for work. As an adult, so it's not really even a thought. It's not even really a thought. Like, like if I stop posting on YouTube, I'm not getting no more growth besides old videos. So it's not a thought. As a kid though, they trained you to think, but really that's that's corrupt because you should just be one with. You should be one with. You should not be, cause even when you, even if you think one second from just doing the thing, you're pulling yourself away from the present moment and that's ruining the chemistry. And now you got to kind of work yourself back into some type of thing when you could have just been 100 the whole time in first person 100. It's not a thought. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not a thought. It's a, it's a, um, it is a feeling actually. It is a feeling uh, that's there. And like, that's the only feeling I would say, the feeling of being, you know, instead of uh, uh, thinking, it's just being, just being, just being. And that could be very, uh, uh, what's it called? It could make you want to think about 
the being. Instead of the instead of the being, being, thinking, in the moment, which is not even really a thought, because when you're in the moment, ninety percent of your thoughts is connected to life and what's going on around you, and you're thinking and ad libbing in, in the present moment. You might plot and plan certain things, but overall, you're kind of one with and. And um, what I'm talking about right now is, is very tricky. And I hope y'all follow what I'm saying. But I'm about to end this video right now. I'm just thinking to myself, is there anything I left off? Because that's a real transformation right there. It's being in the present moment. But you never want to be too engaged in the present moment to where you can't see what's going on around you. I'm that guy. Like I'm, 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 I'm training. I, I train myself to be prepared for all things. Like you know, Tupac said it the best. Let's picture the possibilities. Well, you know, before I go into a situation, let me picture the possibilities, because how many people have not and fell victim to? So more than we count, probably. So I just that's how I think and. I want friends around me who think that way and respect the way I think. They know how I think, they accept how I think. And that's just what I feel, man. So that's just how it is. So uh, uh, that's just how I think, bro. It's a good feeling though to be more clear on things because i be feeling like i gotta walk around all the time with this little journal in my note thing and just writing right right because you gotta track track your progress because anytime you go back into like i said i cut off the video or i go away from my therapy session and come back to you're going right back into the thing that's poison you're not about to go into the sunset and you know we're working now to get there but every time you relax and lay back down or chill you're going you better yeah you better stay in that higher frequency and i talk a lot about fasting and i think it's very important but i also think staying in that higher um awareness is more important than even fasting I think fasting is very important, but you don't even gotta fast it because it's it's I'm gonna keep it a hundred. It's really the, the the journaling. And journaling is funny because because you're writing words, it's not really measured. How do you know, okay, I wrote about this girl breaking up with me? How do you know you're you know you can when you write in though, one thing I give credit is that you can feel in that very same moment, you start to feel more happy, healthy, and sound, and you feel like you're finding clues and answers to things that you would never even come close to with just the naked mind. But um, how do you know, right, after you put your notebook away and you go back to your life, how do you know and track that measurement of progress that you made Obviously, when you go talk to more women and you realize you got more energy, and you're more present, you know, you keep that theme with that theme. Like if I was writing about my uh, anything like food and then I realized when I got around food and I smelled Popeyes, but it didn't really make me that it made me hungry, but I didn't give in to the hunger. Then I know that it's some type of growth some muscle inside of me like i built when i was doing that journaling but sometimes like i'm telling y'all y'all will do the work the journaling and go back into a situation the only thing i'm think that really grows from shadow work is that you your ability to catch 
what you're feeling when you go back around the smell of Popeye's. When you're in that food court, do you smell that uh, a bourbon chicken? And you know that you know that you would have just uh, gave in. But you actually had some self-discipline. That's kind of how I measure my journaling to myself. You know, when you go talk to a girl and she can't trigger you the same way, she can't, you know, you talk to a pretty girl, but you got, you know, you got more of the ability to, uh, you got more of a higher ability to, uh, what you gonna call it? You got more of a higher ability to not feed into situations. That's when you know. That's when you know. Let me close this window, bro. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be in my own zone. But yeah, that's how I already measure the journal. I measure it by, uh, I measure it by what you call it. Probably about to grab something. Like that. Huh? Oh.